Good day to all of you. Shout out to our new subscribers and thank you very much to those who follow our uploaded videos. I hope your support will continue. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Let's start. I think nearly everyone has heard tales of Ouija boards and frightening seances gone horribly wrong. When I was a young teen I scoffed at such tales while at the same time finding them seductively compelling somehow. I enjoyed scary movies and loved the classic haunted houses with their spider webs, creaky stairs and weakly flickering candles the only protection from whatever inhabited the attic or walked the long dark hallways after midnight. Harmless fun I used to think until I realized that such things are real, at times a little too real for my liking. It is a reality I admit to wrestling with at times along with the inevitable spiritual and existential ramifications arising from it. They say the best deception the devil ever perpetrated was convincing mankind he doesn't exist. If you don't believe in something how can you hope to defend or guard yourself against it? How would you recognize it? The devil does not want us to believe in God so he goes about his business in the dark and in secret. The quintessential coward. But it is said the greatest coward can hurt the most ferociously. Make no mistake about it, Ouija boards and seances are dangerous. The following account is but one example of what can happen to not only those foolish enough to participate in such activities, but also to innocent bystanders as it were. It was over 40 years ago, a young mother and her four-year-old daughter, fleeing from an abusive husband and father, move into a new home with hopes of a fresh start in safety and security at last. Not an easy thing for a woman to do in those days by any stretch, but little were they to know the house wasn't exactly unoccupied and that another more harrowing trauma was literally on their doorstep just waiting to be let in. It seems the previous occupants had not quite taken everything with them when they packed. It started off gradually, as many of these things do, with awful death-like smells coming and going from nowhere. There must have also been an opening or breach somewhere in their new home where large disgusting blowflies were getting in, but its exact location could never be pinned down. Then started the dreams of a tall dark figure in a long coat and a hat, like Jack the Ripper. Dr. Mengele and Freddy Krueger combined to form a Victorian era gent from hell, you might say. Things worsened. Whatever was in the house was getting more powerful, more bold perhaps gaining strength from their negative emotions of stress and fear the creature, or whatever it was began more and more to cement itself into reality inflicting bites and scratches on the poor terrified mother while she slept. A ploy I now believe, to emotionally and spiritually disable and weaken her so as to leave the child even more vulnerable to its vile and despicable intentions. The four-year-old girl was now to become the focus of the entity with her recalling visions of dark shapes and shadows and a tall man wearing a coat and had entering her bedroom at night to play with her. Almost 12 months had passed since moving into the house and this one night, the entity attempted to sexually assault the child, placing its hand where no one's hand should be. The horror, the revulsion, the terror and confusion this four-year-old girl suddenly felt reverberated through the house upon a blood-curdling scream. Her mother could no longer deny the reality of what was happening. She immediately sought the help of a priest who consequently blessed and cleansed the house and to their knowledge the thing or demon or psychopathic spirit, or whatever it was, was gone, and whatever gateway it came through now closed. That sweet little four-year-old girl is now about 45 and she still lives in that house and I see her regularly. We are good mates, I have been there many a time and not felt or seen anything out of the ordinary. It is just another ordinary house in an ordinary street in an ordinary suburb. Could be any suburb, really, could be your suburb. I have decided not to identify the people who are the subject of this story to avoid any embarrassment or undue attention. What's happened happened, let's move on, nothing to see here etc, except maybe a giant glaring warning, for it later came out from a neighbor that the previous owners hosted regular weekly seances with the ubiquitous Ouija board at center stage every Wednesday night. Does Wednesday have some significance? I don't know. Did they knowingly conjure something from the very depths of hell itself or was it unintentional, a mistake? Was it this thing that drove them to put the house on the market in the first place? If so, they have a case to answer. Such an act constitutes gross negligence like a spiritual hit and run drunk driver. Kind of. It is definitely not cool. You make a mess you gotta clean it up. To meddle in this stuff in the first place is downright stupid. 
to flee and leave for some other poor soul to suffer and clean up, if they survive, is almost the lowest act and perhaps gives you an idea of the mentality of these kind of people to begin with. Good intelligent people don't mess with this stuff. It's stupid and it's dangerous and not worth losing your soul over. Beware the Ouija board, my friends. If you want to share your scary story, just email YTStarVlogsHorrorStories at gmail.com.